Uh, this is a, a, a nice meeting. I think you and I were involved in the, in the beginnings of IESLC, and it's now linked up with ESMO, and it's a nice, intimate meeting. Uh, what's hot in this meeting? What's really moving in, in lung cancer? So uh, what happened these days in lung cancer is a shift of paradigm ah. to uh, personalized medicine and uh, patient selection. Uh, that is the key uh, these days. And, and this comes all from the, uh, the EGFR story. Yeah, I think uh, in lung cancer, uh, EGFR uh, story was the first story, mm -hmm. and uh, probably the still the most important uh, story. Uh, well, uh, the lesson is learned from breast cancer, from hematologic malignancies, uh, GIST tumors, mm -hmm. sure. uh, but uh, it comes very, very quickly in uh, into the lung cancer uh, mm -hmm. scenario. What are the, the, the new interesting biomarkers which will help us in the future target the medicines in lung cancer? So uh, uh, what we have learned over the last uh, couple of years and particularly over the last year is uh, the significant role of EGFR mutation mm -hmm. for uh, decision of first-line therapy. And that is mainly uh, uh, coming from Asian study, particularly the IPAS study, mm -hmm. where patients were randomized to EGFR TKI versus chemotherapy and showed very clearly a better uh, response and uh, outcome for patients with EGFR mutations. Right. Okay. And uh, there are a couple of uh, studies uh, in, in Western uh, uh, countries now uh, verifying exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Now the difference is uh, that uh, EGFR mutation is more frequently uh, occurring in Asian populations mm -hmm. versus uh, Western populations, but mm -hmm. we believe uh, it has the same significance. It was not long ago that the EMEA and the FDA before it um, in colorectal cancer agreed to uh, a targeted agent only in, uh, in RAS, uh, wild-type uh, uh, patients. Do you see this happening in terms of the regulation uh, of, of new medicines coming into the lung cancer field? Yeah, so the European uh, regulatory uh, agency, EMEA, has approved uh, gefitinib mm -hmm. for uh, patients with EGFR mutations mm -hmm. in any line. Uh, of therapy, mm -hmm. so uh, so they have uh, uh, looked into this. Uh, FDA has certainly <laughs> looked into it, but um, I am not aware of that. Uh, uh, in lung cancer, uh, there is uh, an approval related to a specific biomarker yet. And Elotinib was just recently approved uh, in Elotinib the was, was recently approved by FDF in the maintenance setting. Mm -hmm. uh, based irrespective of mutations? Irrespective of mutations, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and that was in the maintenance setting. In non-small cell lung cancer? In non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, EMEA uh, haven't done that yet? Uh, I think uh, there is some kind of, uh, I don't know what the regulatory uh, system mm. called it, but uh, they have it on the table yeah. and they have it under consideration. Mm -hmm. And I think there is something pending. I don't mm. know exactly what, what the term is, yeah. uh, but it is under consideration in, in Europe as well. So in, 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 in our young days, Kirsten Rass uh, mutations were associated first with adenocarcinoma of the lung before anything else, uh, pancreas. Um, has, has that dropped out of the, uh, out of the target area uh, for non-small cell? No, KRAS, uh, and particularly KRAS mutations, mm -hmm. has been, uh, of course, uh, looked into uh, in lung cancer mm -hmm. and particularly related to EGFR inhibition, mm -hmm. both with TKIs and with antibodies. Uh, no, we don't believe KRAS mutation plays exactly the same role in lung cancer as it does 
in colorectal cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, it uh, is true that uh, patients treated with EGFR TKI have a low response uh, on therapy if they have a KRAS mutation, but it does not necessarily translate into a shorter outcome. I see. And in contrast to uh, to colorectal mm -hmm. cancer, and for cetuximab in lung cancer, we haven't seen uh, yet a significant uh, shorter uh, yeah. outcome. Yeah. Any other um, gen uh, genomic uh, targets or proteomic so targets or yeah, vascular it targets? It is definitely <coughs> uh, what uh, is exciting uh, the community these days is uh, the encouraging results with uh, EML4 ALK fusion gene and, uh, and uh, agents targeted this specific uh, rearrangement. Such as? Uh, there is um, a drug from Pfizer mm -hmm. out there. That was the first uh, phase one study. And uh, the phase one study was presented at ASCO uh, last year. And um, uh, I think among 18, 19 patients with this particular rearrangement, uh, 15 had uh, almost a dramatic response. Now, this rearrangement occurs o only in 3% of unselected patients. Non-small cell. Non-small cell patients. But uh, in Uni United States, 3% of 216,000 new, new cases still a lot is people. still a lot of patients. Yeah, sure, sure. So, so uh, are we getting an update on that data at uh, this Geneva meeting? Uh, there has been some presentations mm -hmm. on... Uh, on uh, the ALK uh, fusion gene, uh, in, uh, I'm not sure an update from this study will be presented. Mm -hmm. Rumors say that uh, an update will be presented at ASCO this year. Okay. Good. Any other uh, hot topics that are uh, exciting you on your group? Uh, Iloprost uh, is uh, in a chemo prevention mm -hmm. setting something uh, of a group uh, has been uh, focused on in collaboration with what we call the long spore group in United States. SPORE is uh, an NIH grant, mm. a very prestigious one, uh, including several institutions in uh, in U.S. Iloprost is a prostacycline analog uh, which has, which is approved in Europe for pulmonary hypertension. Um, it is uh, the prostacycline uh, pathway, or the, uh, uh, some of the elements in this pathway, seems to be uh, important for uh, chemo prevention mm -hmm. of uh, lung cancer. And um, uh, we had a chemo prevention study, uh, phase, phase one, two study, um, showing that this drug actually has effect on uh, dysplastic uh, lesions in high risk patients. High risk patients means smokers. Mm. Uh, with at least 30 pack year smoking Just history. But uh, in, in a placebo controlled uh, phase two study, we saw that uh, this drug um, uh, has an effect on uh, histology, meaning regression of dysplastic uh, lesions. So uh, we find this very encouraging and is currently negotiating with uh, the drug company as well as mm -hmm. NCI mm -hmm. to initiate a much larger study fi uh, based on these mm -hmm. findings. Have you got a spiral CT program? We have a spiral mm -hmm. CT. Uh, so this Ilopros could fit into this very easily? It could. Uh, that's an interesting uh, 
uh, thought we haven't uh, so far come there. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's something we would think about doing in the institute in Milan, certainly, because we have 15,000 people in going through the Spiral CT program. And Absolutely. We're we already running a chemo prevention program, but uh, it, it would be a nice idea to try and uh, piggyback that in. It, absolutely. So, I uh, agree. We'll talk about that at another time, Fred. Thank you very much indeed.